James Ryan Killian's career at MIT began as a transfer student in 1924. He'd left Trinity College, now Duke, to study textiles and management, planning to enter his father's line of business back home in South Carolina. He became instead one of the most important figures in the history of MIT. His stint as the Institute's president from 1948 to 1959 tells only part of the story. After graduation, Killian went to work at the alumni magazine, Technology Review. By 1930, he was the magazine's editor, working there until 1939, during which time he helped found what is now the MIT Press. At the age of 34, Killian was tapped by MIT President Compton to serve as his executive assistant. In September of 1939, with the outbreak of war in Europe, Compton left Cambridge for Washington to steer national defense research, and Killian became, in effect, the acting president of MIT. He was, he later wrote, magnificently unprepared for the job, neither a scientist nor an experienced large-scale administrator. Yet he deftly orchestrated the management of both the school's educational mission and its defense efforts. During World War II, MIT became the nation's single largest research and development contractor, with thousands of scientists and defense workers on campus, including a fifth of all of America's physicists. After the war, returning GIs, many with families, required special housing. Killian had Westgate Village, the first married veterans housing project in the United States, up and running by spring of 1946, less than a single year after the war's end. In 1948, Killian became MIT's 10th president. Killian's tenure was marked by a push to broaden and deepen education at the Institute, shaping the MIT of today. He helped found the new School of Humanities in 1949, and a year later, the Sloan School of Management. The Sputnik hurtles its way into space to make a date with history that heralds the dawn of a new era. In the aftermath of the Russians' launch of Sputnik in 1957, President Eisenhower called Killian to Washington, naming him the first presidential advisor on science and technology. Amidst intense national anxiety that the Soviet Union could dominate the world from space, Newsweek put Killian on its cover as the man in charge of the new world war of science. Killian later wrote that he was suddenly living in the eye of a political hurricane. Future movements are controlled by its electronic brain. An implant and laboratory, scientists record the progress of the Red Moon 600 miles above the Earth. Killian focused his efforts on the public schools. He was instrumental in initiating a series of curriculum reforms that gave a major and lasting push to science education in the United States. Killian also helped lay the groundwork for the creation of an accelerated space program and what would become NASA. In 1959, Killian returned to MIT, leaving the presidency to become chairman of the MIT board. In the 1960s, from his perch at MIT, Killian played a major role in the creation of the public broadcast system and came to be called the father of PBS. Looking back on his years at the helm of MIT, he described his term as climbing through delectable mountains, a time when federal funds were plentiful and regulations were few. In a lasting tribute, the heart of the MIT campus and site of its annual commencement exercises was renamed Killian Court in 1973. A tribute that will keep the memory of James Ryan Killian alive at MIT far into the future. <laughs>